everybody, welcome back to the challenge. <laughs> I'm Rachel Arazzo and this is day three of the Create a Musical Tarot Deck Challenge. Hope everyone's doing awesome. Let me make sure I'm live. I want to apologize ahead of time <laughs> in case I sound a little funky. I'm starting to get a little sick. But it's totally okay. We're going to keep on rolling through this. Let's see. Let's pull up comments. Ooh, that quality though. Okay, got it up. So we will give it a couple minutes. That way everybody can come on in. <laughs> Today, we are gonna be going over numerology and note progression. So, it's definitely going to be all about uh basically if you are a fan of numerology and already use it for your tarot cards how you could really break this down into how the counting notes so even if you don't know how to read jeep music totally can do this let me know if the picture's okay for you it's flashing weirdly on my screen it might be my computer freaking out again <laughs> But I saw Kimberly come in. Hi, Kimberly. Hope you're doing awesome. Let's see. We'll give it a couple more minutes. I know I'm a tad early. Okay. A little blurry. Ah, damn. Okay, let me see. Let me see if I can fix that. Um, let's see. How's that? Let's see if that's any better. Hi, Missy. Hope you're doing awesome. Nope, that didn't help at all. <laughs> That didn't help at all. I apologize for that. Let's see. We'll bring it in a little closer. How about that? Okay. We'll see if that helps. <laughs> but I hope everybody's having an awesome day anyway. And I really hope that... Uh... Yeah, it might be the actual picture feed. <laughs> it's one of those days. <laughs> Everybody's feeling uh, Super Mercury retrograde anyway, so I will go ahead and blame it on that. <laughs> but I hope you guys have been enjoying this challenge. I know it's been really refreshing for me to actually go through and dig through all of my music again. And I'm really enjoying listening to everybody's songs that they pull up. So again, you can do this at any time at your own pace. I know this is quite a task in general to create a tarot deck, let alone a musical one. Um, so if you need a little bit more time, feel free. It's totally fine. <laughs> but this is the kind of stuff that I like to do as a part of the Academy as well to help you break out of your shell a little bit. Let's see. Let's make sure we got people coming to the right spot as well. I've got messages popping up. What's going on? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So who here that's here so far, say hello if you're here, um, has done numerology with their tarot cards before? Give me a thumbs up or a heart or something to let me know that you've done it before. Hi, Lori. I'm so glad you could make it today. Who here has done numerology with their cards? Because I know I have a tad that's actually, I learned it a specific way with relating the numbers in the majors to the numerological um, meanings. So who here has done that? I saw a couple things. Kimberly says some numerology, but not with cards or anything else. Okay. Very, very new at it. Okay. Which you're in a good spot anyway, Kimberly, because that's in the academy. 
because you're a part of it. So that's already in there. You're already in a good spot. We go over that. Lori says, I've done numerology, but not with tarot. Okay, that's fine. We're going to go over the basics of that today to give you guys a basic understanding. So basically, when it comes to numerology and tarot, the easiest way that I started learning it was relating the first 22 major arcana to the aspects of the numbers. So we take out the fool. The, that's where the fool is usually zero. And we go from there. So for example, um, when we go with the magician, he's usually one, which the magician in numerology is usually in beginnings, mastery of something, thinking of the individual. Um, whereas the high priestess usually is balancing between the spiritual realm and the physical realm. That's why she's two and it goes so on and so forth. So that's the way that I started incorporating numerology and tarot. Today we're going to do something really, really easy with numerology and music that'll help you understand it a little bit better for tarot as well. So, so for the past two days, we've been basically doing shufflemancy, what I was showing you guys last week in the live, where we break down a song's meanings and we, we relate it to our lives. Only in this sense, you guys have been relating it to tarot cards, which is wonderful. <laughs> You guys are already ahead of the curve. Ooh. I apologize if it's flicking around on your screen. Try refreshing it and see if that helps. Because um, I'm seeing it over here being funky. So, Shufflemancy is just a technique where you shuffle a playlist and a song will come up. And that answers your question just like a tarot card will answer your question when it comes to shuffling a deck. So, it's kind of a little bit like musical tarot chairs. <laughs> Which card is on the chair and which one are we going to rotate and figure out? That's pretty much what we've been doing. So we're going to continue doing that with a little bit more introspection. Because we already got super specific yesterday. We're going to take it in a different way today. So a key, like we talked about yesterday, really is about breaking it down by sound and by tone. But the key to actual shufflemancy is to break down the information in a song to actually mean something. And one easy way you can do this is with numerology. So if you haven't heard of numerology before, numerology is just the study of numbers. And hi, Christina. And it can also be called angel numbers depending on the numbers that do come up for you. Ah, oh, I'm so glad you're excited for today. I know you're a numerology person, especially when it comes to angel numbers. So for example, when it comes to numerology, what we go over in the academy, I show you how to do your birth number and what it would mean in terms of your life path. Um, it works very similarly. So for example, if you've never done your birth number before, you add up all the numbers on your birthday. So for example, I was born May 10th, 1994, and it adds up to 11 when we sum it down. Um, it can display our personality, our attitude, things like that. And it can also determine, there's a bunch of different numbers, some that determine your, how you are in love and how you are in your career and your mental state and everything like that. So that's what we're going to do when it comes to tarot cards. We usually get the sum of a tarot card's personality, at least in the majors, when we really use um, numerology. <laughs> Faith says, yay, I'm an 11-2 and we're both Taurus on Moon 2. Cool. Yeah, we are. I'm a Sar... Um, I noticed that, that we're both Taurus Sun. It's just synchronicity. It's wonderful. <laughs> so the basic number meanings, we go 1 to 9. We skip 10 because the thing when we get to the double digits is to get it as small as possible unless it's a master number where it repeats the same number in a, a couple times. So I was giving the example of the magician. We started the, magi the magician for tarot cards as the number 1. So that's beginnings and individuality. We go to 2, which is duality, balance, we have the High Priestess, and you can even see this thinking of the minor cards 
how the aces are all the purest form and they're usually the master of that form. We get to the twos and it's usually balance between that element. Threes are usually creativity, so the empress, and it's very nurturing. That's why we usually have communities or friendships in threes, or we see three people working together on a problem. Four is the emperor, and we go into stability, four legs on a chair. Um, the four of wands, it's four wands straight up. Five, we get some change and in instability. So the hierophant is more unstable than the magician is because he's not the purest form. He goes off and does his own thing on the side. <laughs> six is harmony and give and take. So six is the chariot. Yes, we move into it. <laughs> we do six for give and take. Seven is retreat. So we have the hermit where, where it's rest and introspection. Eight for manifestation and responsibility. Nine for transition and completion. And it will continue in that cycle over and over and over again. And one way to get really in depth with your musical tarot deck, and this is not required at all, if you want, <laughs> if you want to go above and beyond and really make your stuff super minute, you can introduce numerology with it. So, for example, in the workbook that I'll give you guys today, if you want to open it up so you can actually see what I'm talking about here. Wrong. Boom, boom, boom. So when it comes to the workbook, I give you an example with the Pokemon theme song. So Pokemon, it was a kid's show back in the 90s, early 2000s. <laughs> and I give you the sheet music for you and I break it down by the note steps. Because we talked about the notes and how when it moves up on a staff or down on a staff, it works in steps, like walking up and down stairs. Or sometimes we jump or we climb up to something. So... In this case, we break it down by how far of the jump it is. So if I open this here on the side. Load, 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 load. There we go. So the very first three measures I give you. It's I want to be the very best like no one ever was. Super simple. If we break it down by numbers, it goes one, 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 two, three, three, one, one. Super simple. And I even show you on a staff how it actually works out so you can actually see it. If we think about it in this way, just by breaking it down by those numbers, we can add numerology to it and the meanings of those numbers. So one is for the individual, two is for balance. Three is for nurturing or community. So when he's saying, I want to be the very, or I want to be the very best, he's basically saying, I want individual. I want to do something. I want to be the very best at something, okay? I want that balance of being the best person. Like no one ever was. As soon as he mentions no one, it goes into, there's other people involved here. There's... A community involved here. So I want to be the best out of this group of people. We have the three. <laughs> Give me hearts or um, likes if you understand what I'm saying so far. Because usually when you're creating a song and you create the melody first, this is a really subtle way to see how the lyrics link up with the notes. And how it's, it's almost like... Um, subliminal messaging in your music how it's when you break it down with numerology in the note patterns then you can see where in the verse they start talking about certain things or who they're really focused on yeah it is faith says it's really wild how that links up it really is music christina says i'm music illiterate and i'm following along just fine awesome <laughs> that's my point i want to make sure everybody understands so when and the awesome thing about doing it like this especially if you really like numerology and you know how to count <laughs> from one to nine super easy then it helps you understand the sheet music a little bit better because even just looking at it you can count 
and you can understand it. You don't know how, you don't have to know what notes these are. You don't have to know the key or the rhythm or any of that. All you have to do is count where you see the dot. And the examples that I gave you guys today in the pin post do that exactly for you. So a couple other things that you can look at. So for example, we have the Book of Mormon. I give a song, the very first song of the musical called Hello. And in the actual scene, it's different Mormon missionaries going up and knocking on doors, saying hello and introducing people to the Bible, pretty much. So as they're going through it, they're saying, hi, my name is Elver, Elder Price, and I would like to show you this most amazing book. It's pretty much in one. So it goes, ba-dum, ba -da 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 -dum, and trying to include someone in their community. So you can see in that video I give you where the guy's doing it on the piano, you see he's constantly moving in threes. The note is always one, two, three on the piano, and you can see it. So... It's that sense of he's welcoming you into the community. He's trying to be nurturing, saying, Hello, my name is this. I would like to share this wonderful thing with you. Super easy, and it constantly does that. Even as they go through the song, and they're like, This book will change your life, or if it doesn't, then you'll go to hell, kind of thing. It's constantly moving into that cheery nurturing threes <laughs> trying to bring come with me we want the best for you kind of thing <laughs> or the next one smoke on the water you see it moves in fours so even if you don't know the words to the song smoke on the water by deep purple it, he keeps going one one four one one four over and over and over again and you can even see it when you pause the video and look at um the actual finger placement again because they highlight it for you and it's interesting when you come in with the song because if you listen to it he's talking about how this concert hall burned down and they're trying to find a new venue over and over and over again and they just keep seeing this fire happening because all these different venues are lighting on fire so they're searching for the stability. It's one person searching for the four. The stability. <laughs> it's super cool. Kimberly says she loves Smoke on the Water. I do too. It's a super catchy beat. But this also helps you give a really good visual so you can literally count it for yourself. And it's not complicated with sheet music and everything. <laughs> so if you do this... This is not only a really fun way to get to know numerology <laughs> and it helps it link it in your head, but then you can relate it to a song and then that in turn helps you with the tarot cards. So if I'm moving from the magician, magician to the emperor, I am the single strongest element, strongest, I'm strong by myself, individual, and then all of a sudden I have to find more stability because my stability was lost. It's super fun. <laughs> And then I actually give you the Pokemon theme again on the links so you can go and see the sheet music again with counting him on the uh, piano. So if we think about this kind of technicality for today, today's task is to go over the suit of swords, right? So when we think of swords, we think of intellectual processes, we think of communication, um, very quick judgment, quick action. Incorporating numerology into what you would put for your section of the suit of swords really will help influence that element. Because unless you associate swords with fire, we really get really detailed when we go into the suit of swords. When we think of people within the suit of swords, they are incredibly logical they're incredibly in tune with finite processes. These are usually our tech people that are good at technology, but horrible at communicating over technology. <laughs> um, they're the people that are very blunt and to the point. Numerology works very similar when you do it with the sheet music this way, because you're being very detailed and you're looking at all the minute stuff. Who understands so far? Does that put a light bulb with anybody for you? Give me hearts or likes, let me know.
Awesome. Awesome, awesome. So, thinking about it, let's do an exercise today. Name a song, and I'll look up the sheet music, and I'll show you how it is. Like, how we can break it down. And see where numerologically, num <laughs> where within numerology it would fall. Just pick any song. And it doesn't have to be one that you plan for today for the suit of swords. Just to have some fun with this. I'll give it a second. Looking at comments. I'll pop up one just in case no one gives one. Look what you made me do by Taylor Swift. Sure. Sheet music. Faith says I'm really confused with the stuff. That's okay. I'll try to explain my confusion. The first four notes of Pokemon show one. Yes. And they're all the same note. But yet later it goes from three to one to one. And it's all the same note. I'm confused. Okay. That's fine. Let me make this bigger, and I will be happy to explain it for you. So, let's see. Let's turn this a little. Let's turn this. Okay. So, what we're looking at here when we talk about steps, Faith, is whether or not it moves on the staff. So, the reason why it's one, first off, is because it goes... I want to be the very best. It's all the note of A. This entire line. It doesn't move. Whoop. Let's make sure that's not crooked. Okay. It's all the same note. The reason then that it jumps down is because it goes from A to G. It moves down the staff. So it goes down one line. It then jumps to three. Let me actually. Ah, trying to make sure that it is not funky for you. <laughs> uh, there we go. There we go. The reason that it is not, that it jumps down to three then, is because we're going one, two, three steps down. That's why. We are counting literally how it moves. When it's on the same line, it's one. If it moves, because we count the same line as one when we're going from one step to one, because we're just walking in a line across. Whereas if we're walking downstairs, think of it as I walk a little and then I step down. That's why it's two. And then we walk a little, step down, step down. That's three steps. When it comes to that. Does that make sense? That's why down here. For the other music. Making sure we have it here. For the other music. It goes one, 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 two. Then it goes one, two, three. Like that. And then it goes one, two, three. Again. And then it goes one, one. Because they're all on the same note. Does that make sense? I know that can be a little confusing. <laughs> and I'm sorry for the wonkiness. I'm on a interesting looking stand for this. Other way. Come on. Bigger, bigger. Boop. But does that make sense, Faith? Uh, that's an awesome question, though. For people that don't know music, that's a wonderful question to ask. I understand the one, 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 and the two, and the three, and the three. Just when it goes back to one that you don't understand. Okay, so the reason why it went back to one is because it wasn't going up and down again. It's just stayed on that note. If you stay on the same note, you're just moving forward one. And moving forward one. Instead of going boom, 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 boom. If it was three, it would be going down, down, three steps. Or it would be going up and down, three steps, over and over and over again. Does that help? 
I know sometimes sheet music can be a little <laughs> can be a little uh, hard to understand, but that's a wonderful question. Awesome. I'm glad you get it. Awesome. <laughs> Let's see. Christina says that song is bomb. Yes, it is. <laughs> Kimberly says in the music video is so much shade in one place. It's like going on the swords playlist, but I'm not sure if it's more Queen of Swords or Page or Oh, okay. We can take a look. Let's take a look. So we were looking at Look What You Made Me Do by Taylor Swift. Okay. Give me shit music. Load it up. Okay. Let me take this off the thing so we can all look at it together. Boop. Boom. So we all look at it together. So I don't like your little games. Okay. So this sheet music actually gives us the note names, which will actually help out as well. So it goes one because it's still on the note A. I don't. Talking about I. So individual. Goes up one, two, three notes. So step across one, two, three. So one, one, three. Like. So we're talking about somebody else now because it moved up to three. Then we go one, two. I don't like your. So one, one, three, two. Little. Back down two. And back down two again. Games. Back down two, one. So. One, one, three, two, 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 one. Okay? So just from that first line, this tells me we're moving from the individ individual. This person has done uh, more things just between the two of them, which probably also irks Taylor Swift a little bit. And it's in balance because it keeps... It keeps going back to two here. And then it repeats the exact same thing with the other one. So I don't like your little games, don't like your tilted stage. It repeats this over and over again before it goes one, 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 one. Funny how it's the fool here. <laughs> so the fact that this pattern keeps repeating, and I actually haven't heard this song. So the fact that it keeps repeating, it keeps telling me not only does this person keep making a fool of Taylor Swift in public over and over and over again, but they're struggling to find that balance again and again. Does it make sense? For those of you that have heard this song, does it seem like that's happening? Whoop. Does it seem like that's happening over and over and over again in this song? I'll give it a second so it catches up. Yep, okay. So that's super interesting then. And the fact that even the lyrics are saying tilted stage, the role you made me play, little games, the way that it's going like that, you can tell the issue that she's having. <laughs> Anyway, she gets dragged on social media for other celebrities. Okay, so the video was her firing back. Okay, so I could under I could see that for sure, because it goes it brings on that community aspect for social media. Let's see. Let's look at the music video, and see how it blends. And I won't play this loud. So we don't get copyright issues like we did yesterday. We got copyright issues yesterday. <laughs> uh. Because just the fact that she's mentioning the community, that would make sense for social media. <laughs> Here lies Taylor Swift's reputation. Okay, that's interesting. I just listened to the beginning part of it. So just the, even the beats that she has in between 
We talked about staccato yesterday, so that makes it very jilted when things are staccato, like she's talking about. Um, and it shows how uneven everything is because it's super staggered. That's very interesting. I'm going to have to listen to the rest of that song and give it a breakdown. <laughs> but that's very fun. And you can see how numerolo within numerology it goes along with the sheet music. Where every time she talks about herself, it's one. Every time she talks about the community or other people messing with her, it goes into three and two. That's super cool. So then, if you think about it as well, it also gives that mental aspect. Anytime you see something change within a song or hear the sound change, it's very much about something changing intellectually. They're changing their mind as they go through the song. Let's see, there was a comment. Faye says, I'd love to hear read your breakdown of this song. I think it has more hidden message about the music industry as well. Yeah, and it's funny because whenever I do a Shufflemancy reading like this, this is literally what I do when someone asks me for a reading like this, is I get the sheet music and I break down the song that comes up and I send them snippets of the sheet music so they can see where I'm talking about. And whenever... It, whenever I do this, I think of Josie and the Pussycats, the movie, not the comic books, but the movie where they're putting subliminal messages about you will have Big Macs and <laughs> orange is the new red and that's totally fetching and all this kind of stuff underneath the music tracks. That's what I think of here because when you break it down with the numbers, it seems like you're giving a little bit of energetic influence under the song. So if we have any music writers in here, <laughs> that's also what you can do. It is so cool. I love that you created something with music and tarot and numerology. Me too. It's super fun. So today, I really encourage you guys to think about this a little bit. And even if you don't take out the sheet music, one way you can also do this is if in the song itself, like literally the singer is saying something about numbers. So I think of the song One by Like a Dream Come True. I know the song. Just can't think of the singer's name right now. It's a wedding song. Brian McKnight. Where it's like, one, you like a dream come true. And he starts going through all the numbers and then he goes back to one over and over again. The music does the exact same thing. He climbs on the note staff the exact same way that he's saying it in the song. So you can use that as one of the songs for the Suits of Swords, if it fits for you. Or um, any songs that include numbers. Can you guys think of any that would be interesting to try out for the Suit of Swords? Because it's super technical anyway <laughs> with this uh, with this type of shufflemancy. It's super specific and I feel like it really fits the suit of swords super well. I also think of one is the loneliest number. Um, I think of a bunch of Sesame Street songs just because I have a child <laughs> who constantly watches Sesame Street. So I have a bunch of those in my head. Or it's like my favorite number is 10 <laughs> and stuff like that with Ernie singing it. So even if you don't break it down, you could easily do um, based off of the lyrics. If someone is talking about a number and if it fits in with the tone of that card for you, definitely put it in. <laughs> Kimberly said she was just thinking of one is the loneliest number. Yep. It's because we're psychic. That's why. <laughs> So definitely keep it in mind. And as always, if you're technologically challenged and Air is not a fan of you <laughs> for technology and communication, you can always do what I did yesterday where I just made a playlist and took pictures of it. You can, in the workbook for today, the very last page has where you can just write the things down. And you can do this at any time. Don't, I know this is a lot of songs and numbers to come up with. 
all at the same time. So definitely if you need help or if you got to take a little bit longer, go for it. This is super fun and relaxed. <laughs> And listen to these songs, look at the videos, and let me know what you think of them. How did they... Watching the piano on it, have you thought of music in that way before? And counting it? Um, see, try incorporating numerology into your own practice a little bit. Next time you turn on the radio, try counting with it and see what happens. <laughs> and see what comes out of it. But if there's no questions, we can call it there for today. Super quick today. Let's see. Okay, I think no questions. Let's see. Alrighty. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. <laughs> And seriously, if you have questions comprehending any of this, just tag me. I'm more than happy to walk you through it and pop up a video and I'll talk to you through it. So have a wonderful hump day <laughs> and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.